as time passed, as your own party headed out to the north, where the colloquially in your town known as the Flying Whale, uh, you are heading towards to discover who is trying to murder your new ally. Uh, that being said, making sure to get there was the true issue <laughs> of the matter. Uh, going through a uh, land where you've newly traveled, finding strange pools of energy cascading everywhere and when trying to channel it into themselves, uh, your team eventually arrived to their destination and helped out a few animals here and there. Uh, once here, Wynn felt a large surge of energy before it cut off from her, not fully, not completely, but more like negated itself before it could hurt you, uh, causing the body to essentially shut off that sense or else it might cause actual problems. Uh, the pool of energy that you guys felt, well, that Wynn felt specifically, is here, like the mass mass amount of it is here uh whatever that is will has yet to be discovered but the first is the whole assassination attempt before that raven did state right well we made it in town the first thing we must do is uh tell the council that we have arrived have them know your whereabouts and have you i suppose meet uh cassidy's mother if everyone's ready we can head out I'll lead the way. Need. Very well then. And once more, uh, you saw the entire outstretch of land. You are in the middle of a city. But you are seeing beyond the horizon line and you see a massive amount of things. You see what look like ships in the sky, uh, but truly more like buildings in the sky flying overhead of you. Never leaving the flying whale, because you've never seen these type of things on the ground. But whatever they are, they are for sure interesting as you make <laughs> way through the streets. I love that. I feel like you see these flying ships the size of buildings. It's pretty boring, though. Move on. No. <laughs> uh, as you do, and as you make way through the streets, uh, I'm mainly saying that so uh, <laughs> Raven can say his next thing. Right, well, we are to head over to meet the council. A few things, if you want to know them, I can describe them for you. But essentially, don't make a um, large amount of fuss about things. Uh, don't cause any problems. Most of the laws we have up here are similar to the ones down below. And you might see a few things that aren't normal where you come from. Uh, I can try to explain a few things here and there for you. Otherwise, uh, don't put too much strain on thinking about them as more than likely... You don't truly have to worry about it. But yes, do any of you have any questions before we meet the council? You guys are obviously traveling, uh, but he's basically asking, do you want to know anything? <laughs> it's a good place to eat. <laughs> Depends on your own budget. Uh, further, uh, further inside is where the more expensive places come from. Uh, once you go beyond that border, uh, in the middle, most expensive outward, uh, least expensive. Uh, our barracks are near the middle. So it's a good place to have, uh, some food here and there. I would recommend, uh, in the middle district. Uh, a place called the uh, uh, the Catacomb. It's a nice little uh, restaurant with a whole variety of life. 
uh, around various merchants uh, eat there as well as various soldiers I'll definitely have to check that out Um, is there any customs we should know about before going? No major customs. Is the there only... going to be a problem with uh, my mechanical companion here? So long as you don't cause an any issues such as the companion to bite anyone you should be fine uh but to explain wins uh further explain that the only thing you must do is a slight bow uh arms across uh both sides and politely bowing he like demonstrates uh whenever you're talking to any of the officials uh that we are soon to meet other than that, you also do the same thing for uh, if your employer on a business meeting such as that. But beyond that, no true custom that I can think of. Oh, um, now, I suppose if you are honored, if you are an honored guest in someone's home, the first time around you are to give a gift. But since you are outsiders, it is likely not perceived that you would know this. Well, now that we do know it, should we get a gift? It can be a simple gift. It can be like the coin of your homeland or uh, a plant from your homeland. Something simple, something pers not personal, personal, uh, but pertaining to you. Oh, it's a bit last minute, but I think we can make that work. Uh, one question I have uh, as a player is uh, when you're describing the bowing, um, is that kind of the Japanese style bow where you're kind of more or less stiff as a board, but then just kind of bend at the waist somewhat? Yeah. Okay. It's a... The best way I can describe it, if you've ever seen uh, the movie uh, Black Panther... Uh, the whole arms cross and <laughs> kind of forever. It's hot. Yes, it's higher than that. It's to the shoulders, uh, and then the polite uh, Japanese bow. Oh, okay. Now that's palms towards, because palms out, and that's a nyan. No, <laughs> I don't think so. But it could be. Yeah. Uh... <laughs> I do uh, tell you a few things, though. Uh, oh, the customary gift thing is not necessarily something you need to abide by, but if you do, it's a simple thing. It doesn't have to be extravagant. It could be like a, a coin uh, from your own commerce market. It could be a set of clothing that's not from here. Um, it could be a flower. It could actually be an extravagant gift. It could be like something you don't use, but perhaps the homeowner might have use for it. Uh, mainly, that's the reason uh, he goes to explain, because you can't go beyond the borders without actual uh, legal paperwork and documents. Everyone that leaves the... Essentially, the Flying Fortress... Uh, always has to go through an extensive amount of paperwork before leaving. There's no building beyond its current borders because of the, <laughs> this is the only land they got. Uh, so, like, the customary thing of, like, giving a gift is more like there's only so much up here. So, why not give a little to your neighbor? Uh, that being said, though, he does hey. state... Go ahead. I was going to say, it's not like they really get to go traveling all that often if there's so much to the paperwork. So, yeah, they're going to want stuff from uh, other places brought to them. Yeah. Uh, that being said, though, uh, he does go on to explain that a few things 
up here are a little strict on the need to know basis. Uh, take for example the flying contraption in the sky. Some of them are the size of buildings, but none of you have likely ever seen them. Uh, he goes to explain that they work up here, but whenever they've tried to have them go beyond <coughs> the border of the city itself, they just stopped working and they just plummet to the ground. Research has been like a shitty day. <laughs> <laughs> Research has been ongoing, which is why they took an up uh, a connection with Section Nine, not Section Nine specifically, but R and D department in Haven to like study some things that are up here that have been lost due to time uh, and memoriam. And they're like potentially trying to recreate them uh, backwards, rediscover them. Some things have worked out, other things haven't. I, he does state that the last thing that they are trying to discover is this uh, ancient tablet that has been given to the... Well, ancient tablet copy. Because they weren't going to give you guys the original. Mm -hmm. uh, but he does state that is the last thing we had transferred to Haven uh, as Cassidy was the ambassador for that mission. We do have the original here, but uh, we have yet to discern what it is. We of can course. for sure. If you would like me to take a look at anything, I am quite adept at that sort of thing. Yes, uh, I was just about to say. Uh, if you believe yourselves capable, we can for sure uh, requisition your services in this endeavor. <clears throat> Look at how well I already understand. Yeah. <laughs> well, I may mean, not know a lot about languages and stuff like that, but if there's anything I can help with anything else, you can let me know. Of course. I will state, though, that the only other thing I can tell you is that a lot of things that we have up here, we just don't know how they work. From what has been discerned in the past, our memories have been lost due to a cataclysmic event. Something essentially, from what we believe, the best way I can describe it is fried our brains Wait, or like overloaded the them. Not not your ancestors, but yourselves. Everyone in this city. Uh, alive? Ancestors, ancestors okay, specifically. Okay. Right. Uh, fried our brains in the past to a degree, potentially overloading them. Uh, that the only way that our ancestors could survive was to essentially dump out the old information. It was tough going at first, and then we built from here. We are still learning and discovering what happened on that day. Hmm. Maybe it has something to do with the uh, energy I've been feeling. Quite possible. Do you, do you know exactly which day this was? Uh, ancient archaeologists have depicted it to be roughly around 5,000 years ago. Okay, so... Exactly, it's a relative term for me. You know, there's an elven joke. It's like, ah, I can possibly just ask my grandma. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. Hey, grandma, what do you know about sky whales? <laughs> <laughs> what? Oh, when I was little. Did they say something weird happened like 5,000 years ago? Do you know anything about that? <laughs> <laughs> yeah. Uh, well, that is a joke. I did state very, very early on that the oldest elf is a lot <laughs> younger, younger than, than 5,000. I can also, I can't imagine, like, the processing power and, like, how long it would take up to search your memories for that sort of a thing over mm -hmm. 5,000 years. Uh, but yeah, it's long enough that through a few generations, even elves would have forgotten or were needed to survive and not to worry about the past. But Wynn's family specifically uh, is generationally long-lived. Not to say they have the but answers. we stay, but we pro possibly just stay in one spot, right? Yeah. Uh, but I digress. Uh, Raven then states, 
roughly around 5,000 years ago. Uh, there's no exact date. Uh, if we knew that much, we would for sure discover things. But we know that much due to one of the uh, ancient tablets that we found, which is the one that we sent over to Haven not that long ago. Oh, I should also mention a lot of the things up here that are potentially dangerous. R1, obviously the people. There's always bad people everywhere you go. Uh, and two, flying monster things. Uh, okay. Some of them... Eyebrows raise. Okay, that just raised uh, a couple questions <laughs> I was about to ask. Well, uh... I guess the first one is, can they be tamed? Only some of the wyverns. The wyverns? Oh my god, that'd be so cool. Powerful yes. to wyverns myself, but... Uh, but, um... <laughs> I have a question. Like... Did you guys ask the trees about like what happened because you know some of them can live really really long uh do we have not the <laughs> I plans... just someone's like a regular person's response to that would be like no we haven't asked the trees i thought i was hey, the one surprised? that was supposed to be using dream logic it's like, you'd be surprised what trees know. Well, I understand your sentiment with when a lot of the ancient trees have died out quite some time ago due to needing to re nutrition the soil, if that's the best way I can describe things. Many of the people up here are not uh, inclined to the standard nature as people know it and various other plants that still reside here. They are coordinated off and untouched due to legal reasons. Back in the early days when their ancestors lost their memories, uh, a very early thing to learn to survive is fire is heat and cooking. Trees make fire. We've had various failures in the past, is what I'll say. And unfortunately now, there is very little getting back to it. The oldest tree we have here is roughly 2,000 years old, and it's in the uh, council's uh, emporium chambers. Well, not knowledge could have... Sorry. Knowledge could have been passed on to us. Well, if we are going to see the council, I'm sure we'll see the tree along the way. Yes, quite true. But coordinate it off, and you need approval from the council to get near it. That's lucky that well, we are going to see the council then. Yeah, I guess we always could ask. No harm in asking, right? We just have to be nice and polite. Quite true. Well, you know, the star employee from Section 5 will probably have no trouble at all convincing them. <laughs> uh, Considering we saved a, a daughter of nobility from a nefarious plot by evil noche villains, they might be more favorable being inclined. Let's find out. <laughs> uh, before actually getting here, uh, Raven does state, right, Quite true, technically. That being said, though, since we only have so much land that people can live in and so much land that nature can reside in, a good expensive gift is actually foliage. We, we uh, recently got some Ooh. samples from the forest. However, we have uh, uh, we and I could have recently known designed a hydroponic system for uh, another sort of island nation. We do have that. Ooh, but, but again, um, when, coordinated. Uh, when, when goes through her bag and takes out a bunch of just like dirt and 
she'll use Jewed craft to grow like a bunch of uh, flowers and vines. I have a bunch of those. Good you said foliage, right? Yes. I got plenty of that. <laughs> um, be wary of that. Well, I think it's fantastic. Others might potentially try to recruit you for nefarious means and purposes. Oh. Well, we don't want that, do we? Um, here you go. I just hand over a handful of, like, <laughs> flowers and vines to uh, Raven then. <laughs> She's like, oh, here you go then. Um, okay. Uh, you get to the coordinated area of where the council is. He, like, shouts towards one of the attendants to get, like, bowls or whatever to hold the plants in. And eventually he gets, like, enough of them. So they're not just dirt in his hands. <laughs> well, dirt and plants in his hands. Uh, he speaks with an attendant, telling them that he needs to the council. Right now they're in session, so uh, a few minutes pass after that, and you're allowed in. Uh... A trumpeter. During, the, during those few minutes, I'd like to try and construct something simple. Yeah. Um, and within those few minutes, I would like to ask Raven if he can uh, sequester a few uh, vases or pots so I can start uh, working on, I guess, our gift to present to the council. I let's see because that's what we want to do, right? Is give them a gift, right? Yeah, so we're doing uh... a group gift. <laughs> okay, well, okay, so finder's plan really is it may be you know, those uh desk toys that's like the bird that dips his uh, beak in the water and it comes up and drips off and he goes back. And yes, and so he's gonna make one of those, but it's gonna be. Of a whale jumping out of the water. Oh, and back in and high. Oh, that's adorable. <laughs> if if I can in these few minutes, that's oh yeah. Uh, tinker's tools though. <laughs> tinker's tools. Natural one. <laughs> I'm gonna say it works, but you get. It's like a soap sculpture. Oh, it is just like shitty. <laughs> No, uh, I'm gonna play it this way. You do make it. Uh, crafting a intricate whale, uh, forming, breaching the water, and then breaching back in. Essentially making those, uh, drinking... What are they called? Yeah, we... Drinking birds? Yeah. I think is there enough time to name. see that he's... Is there enough time to see that he's struggling and give him some expert guidance? No, in <laughs> fact, it's perfect. It's immaculate. You help him out, giving work. him guidance. It's going to be beautiful. It just doesn't work. No, uh, you <laughs> ah. try it, and it, like, works perfectly. Jemmy's helping you out tr with the mechanisms. Uh, go ahead and roll your d4. Okay. Uh, you look like you could use some expert guidance. Oh, God. Someone's going to drop it and break it. I have altitude sickness. I think I'm going to tap it. Uh, it's gonna work perfectly, and then when you present it at the gift, they grab it and it falls apart. <laughs> if he can requisition some vases, vases, and anything else that could hold plants, there you go. How's that for? Uh, we can hope for the best, at the very least. Uh, he calls someone to get uh, a few things, and. Uh, if anyone wants to chip in on the actual holders for the plants, for sure can. It's not going to be extremely expensive, but it's going to be like a sure gold. Uh, if anything, this could be a, uh, a group gift. Finder's too busy failing. <laughs> it's no biggie for when. She doesn't mind sharing. Oh, yeah, no, I haven't had need for this alms box lately. How would you like to try to use it as a planter? Uh, Finn will what? pitch in for some vases. An alms, a donation box. 
Maybe repurpose it as an ornate planter? Could. You just remove the lid and it's like a nice wooden framed box. <laughs> or whatever Jemmy <laughs> uses as an alms box. Yeah, it probably looks pretty flashy looking. Yeah, Finn doesn't have a whole lot. He actually travels relatively light, so <laughs> all he can do is help pitch in for uh, for pots and vases. So yeah, you like chipping the gold. Uh, anyone else chipping uh, for the vases? Uh, Cassidy for sure would help out in this. So then another gold from her. I mean, uh, I just, I rolled the natural one, so I'm just going to let Finder fail as hard as he can. <laughs> well, probably you got a 16. Um, I guess yeah. I'll throw in a gold as well, even though I'm already making the clowns. Yeah, you don't have to. I'll throw in a second <laughs> gold. All right, I'll go ahead and, uh, I'll go ahead and throw in the alms box and 10 gold. <laughs> yeah. You guys uh, trying to one up each other now? You're just buying vases from these guys to give to them. No, I have <laughs> literally nothing else to give. I don't have seeds. I don't have <laughs> anything good. from my homeland. I mean, the only other thing I can offer is a song from Eberron. Does anybody want to hear me sing? Yeah. <gasps> oh, I could, I could uh, do a bonsai tree in the arm box. That would be pretty. True. A uh, fine idea. I'd love to see that. Using the arms box, you craft a, uh, you druid craft a, a very beautiful, intricate, uh, little tree. While the, the attendant rushes off as quickly as possible to find the best uh, vases and vases. <laughs> yeah. As close. They're as different. Possible. No. <laughs> yeah, I'll make a bonsai tree, and I'll put like little nice stones on it to make it a little bit more decorative and some moss and grass. My gift could have been... You're putting gems on the tree? No. Uh, on the bonsai stones. box. Yeah. Like around the base. Bonsai box. So stones around uh, the moss What kind of box grass. you're used to? Uh... I like to make sure that my alms boxes are pretty fancy in the first place. There's like trim gold everywhere, some platinum hinges. Of course, plated, because they wouldn't make the best kind of hinges. Yeah. I love the idea that then Wynn is trying to like bedazzle this fucking like gold box. <laughs> that I'm already envisioning having gemstones on it. <laughs> well, well, to be I'm fair. More, I'm just focused on the inside and the plants and how that's mm. gonna look yeah crystal to be fair when you hear alms box you don't think a super gaudy thing because like imagine passing that around a church like this six yeah but then we have to realize box. who are yeah but then we have to realize who's it coming from <laughs> yeah yeah <laughs> yeah you come to these rich church like people that I couldn't possibly donate to this filthy alms box. Ugh, it's made of a base metal. <laughs> oh, see, now you're getting it. And what is that? Local wood? <sighs> yeah. yeah. Uh, as you finish with the bonsai tree and as Finder meticulously crafts something intricate, something unique, Something truly poetic to the stories they've told about the flying whale in the sky. All right, so they're going to find it offensive, are they? No. <laughs> we'll find out. We'll find out. <laughs> <laughs> I'm glad you caught on, Finder. <laughs> uh, the attendant comes back with, like, one uh, vase. is like an intricate terracotta work... Uh, with like gemstones oh, this is and lovely. Thank it. you. Of course. Uh, here's the next one. Uh, the other one is a nice, uh, just simple clear glass at first glance. Then you realize it's diamond, uh, like crafted in a way to like house flowers. Uh, and the last one is a simple wooden uh, holder. However, the wooden holder is made out of. 
actual plants. In fact, it's actually the most expensive one out of the three. Okay, so the terracotta one, I'm thinking like um, bamboo and ferns. I think that would go well with that one, right? I think so. And then the uh, second one, what was the second one? Just basically diamond. Oh, and the and the second one is just the second one is a see-through diamond. Yeah, it's like intricately designed. Um, uh, it flourishes in the light. <laughs> Ooh, okay then. Uh, I'm thinking some of the glowing plants. Uh, we we were able to get. You know, the glowing of fern and uh, moss and stuff like that. Yeah. I think it would shine beautifully with the diamond vase, right? Oh, absolutely. Yeah, so I'll, I'll, I'll do that. All of this is taking me a bit, you know, to get everything right. <laughs> <laughs> but yeah, once I get those done, okay, so the Almsbach is the bonsai tree. The terracotta vase is the bamboo and ferns. And the diamond one, the diamond crystal one, that is the glowing plants. That uh, I was able to collect mm -hmm. and cultivate now. Huzzah! <laughs> so, all right. Uh, I think this is good enough. Is it good enough? Should I do more? I uh, Cassie does say I think it's good. Uh, are you not gonna put anything in the wooden uh, holder though? Oh yeah, the wooden holder. Totally forgot about that one. That's why I was asking. <laughs> Uh, so, okay. Perhaps a crawling vine? Perhaps a crawling vine? That one's just got the <laughs> the drinking bird in it. No. <laughs> um, vines would be good, but let's do something. You don't have any wisteria seeds left, do you? Wisteria seeds? Yeah, the purple wisteria you decorated to it. You grew that, that outside of your door, I believe. Oh, yeah. Like yeah! That was yeah, early yeah, yeah, on. Yeah, 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 yeah. You said it was, yeah, you said it was one of your favorite flowers, and that's personal and something from your land. Yeah, uh, I'll, I'll, I'll do that one. I remember that, because that's how we figured out we play Final Fantasy XIV. Yeah. Yo! <laughs> yeah, I'll, I'll do that. Yeah. Um, nice wisteria in that uh, holder, which honestly is the, I wouldn't say the most extravagant thing, but at the exact same time, the actual holder is the extravagant part and the plant itself extravagant. Uh, it's like a nice, clean, refined look. All right. Now, these may be a little too heavy for me to lift, so can I have some help uh, from you guys? Sure thing. I will carry what I can. I'll help with that as well. Uh, sure. Oh, thank you kindly. I really hope the council like these. <laughs> the trumpeter that has been waiting by the door. Uh, you all good? I'm just oh, holding yeah, his sorry. thing really delicately. I wave at him. All good. Give him a thumbs up. Cool. Gives thumbs up as well. Oh, uh, welcome to the city. Uh, like. Oh, thank you. <laughs> I uh, drew it, craft him a rose. Here you go. <sighs> Expensive. Puts it underneath his hat. Uh, <laughs> <laughs> no one must see me with this. They'll take it. Honestly, they might. Uh, he goes in through a trumpeter's door. Uh, and then, like, inside you do hear a muffled presenting. Uh, Miss Cassidy uh, Williams and friends. 
uh, lights up his trumpet and the doors, like, presumably auto open. But there's like two other attendants inside opening the doors as you step in. The trumpeter bows uh, the way Raven had shown you how to do it. And then like leaves as the other two attendants close the door behind themselves. Alright, is there anybody in there to sort of guide us into position? Or is there any obvious place that we're kind of normally meant to walk up to? Uh, from what you can tell, there's no real place to walk up to. Uh, Raven looks towards you all and, like, states, in a look, uh, there's no need to sit down. This, These are just formalities. If someone tells you to move forwards, do so. Do the bow, do the bow. <laughs> That's what I was looking for. Yeah. Yes, I'll go I, ahead and bow. Uh, yeah, I was, I was waiting for uh, Raven, Cassidy, and Ray to do something to do it so it's like okay we do it now okay do the yeah. bow <laughs> uh, before you, you like as you look towards them you do see the man at the very tippity top stand up do the bow and then raven like nods yes yeah, do now <laughs> uh do right, the bow, do the bow. <laughs> and i kind of whisper so yes. like, we, uh, we all and i whisper to raven when do we give the gifts like, how, how do you do the bow if you're holding a gift? Like, you just hold it and like put the gift bow. down. All right. Or so you just hold to... it and bow. We didn't mean to learn anything. No. <laughs> yeah. Uh, Torella looks towards all of you. Uh, the guy at the very top. I uh, does state, "Welcome, Miss Cassidy. It's been quite some time." Uh, yes. Um, these are my friends from Haven and they have brought you gifts uh, the council gifts oh please uh, present them uh, Cassidy like shows you the door not doors uh, the tables to tables. the left and right mm -hmm. alright well I am definitely going if I'm carrying please. anything I'm going to go ahead and walk over to the left table yeah, and, and uh, has... Sorry, go on. Oh. <laughs> and, and make a show of gently presenting it onto the table. Yeah, um, as uh, as they're presented, I explain uh, what the plants are and where they come from, their history and mm -hmm. stuff like that, you know, really selling it. Oh, if she's talking that, I'm going to wait and then kind of hold the other, you know, one of them up to, to help with that. <laughs> yeah, uh, Cassidy and Raven give you the plants that they're holding and the plant that Finn's holding. So you're like doing it on in line. Uh, and then probably when gives at the final end the name of her uh, family business in Haven. <laughs> Oh, yeah, you have to, like, you know, slip in the, you know... Yeah, just, you never yeah, forget nice. networking. If you look at the exactly. bottom of every single one of those phases, Wynn has written, like... <laughs> has engraved into it. Yeah, it's it. like, <laughs> you take every opportunity to promote your stuff. <laughs> and, you know, if you're ever looking for more... You are happy to supply there at the Grasping Vine in Haven. <laughs> Just trying to get pulled to the side. You're like located at. <laughs> no. Yeah. <laughs> Many of the located council... between the. <laughs> located on the corner of. <laughs> mm -hmm. Just across from the park. Yeah. Um... Conveniently located. If we're going. Yeah. If we're going that far, I can minor illusion the words of the uh... address right next to your shoulder. <laughs> it's okay. <laughs> Uh, when roll persuasion, uh, advantage thanks to Jemmy. Amazing. Uh, advantage because I haven't gone yet. Guide you. <laughs> May the core I guide you as well. 22, and then plus 24. 26. You see like a lot of the councils like in favor. Yes, yes. Grasping Vaughn, you say. Like jotting down notes in their like documents that they're going through. Like circle back. Yeah, right there in Haven. Uh, Lady Cassidy has actually been there and can give you more details. <laughs> uh, sure. And I, and I just wave at, and 
you know, I motion uh, gently towards her with my hand. Um, great place. Good family atmosphere. Good place to visit. Um, you like put her on the spot and like she's freezing. Uh, the girl, you're <laughs> supposed to be my in between. <laughs> and yeah, shop will um, win. You win too. <laughs> Finn will make psychic contact with Cassidy and help feed her the information because he's she, she's struggling. Yeah, uh, you do so. She eventually gets through it. You do see that uh, this woman up here uh, does like laugh at this in a polite kind of way, uh, finding it amusing, but like not laughing at uh, her. But at the exact same time, you feel like a sense of familiarity towards the two. Uh, the person up top seems a little bit older, a little bit more wizened, but still still very pretty. Uh, but Cassidy gets through it thanks to Finn helping out. Uh, yeah. And again, great place. Uh, Tarala does state, thank you, uh, Miss Wynn, was it? And thank you, Cassidy, for the yeah. presentation. I, uh, bow again. The pleasure has been all mine. I really hope you enjoy your guests. And I step back in line. Yeah. I follow mm -hmm. Wynn's lead on that bow. <laughs> uh, okay. Cass Cassidy okay. gives a small little gift. Same with Ray and Raven. They're like small little trinkets they have found in town. Take it back in line. Yeah, I don't want to metagame too much because I know I got a natural one and like I thought this was a good idea at the time. Finder would think it's a good idea. But can I make an insight check to like look around the room and see if there is like any sort of whale iconography anywhere? You know, if, if it's just at advantage. Okay. okay. Natural 20s. Um, there is, let me finish this sentence, but I will state that it sounds bad in the beginning. Okay. There is nothing in this room whale oriented. A lot of it has like ox, dragon, tiger, bear. Uh, a lot of it has to do with like earthly animals. Well, earthly to you. Uh, as people not in D&D &D world. I guess dragons aren't generally earthly. Semantics! <laughs> you really don't see anything of the sea here. It'd be hard to do so. Uh, and while you're thinking all of this, when you do hear some voice in your mind saying, an inspired choice! Bravo! Um, going back to Finder. Okay, so using There's that... nothing is... except for a little small dolphin uh, underneath the hair of Golapa, who is the woman that like slightly chuckled when Cassidy was doing her uh, presentation and fumbled a little bit. But it's like hidden underneath her hair. Alright, so having seen that, I'm going to change my tact for presenting this. I'm going to try and do a little speech to save my ass. So, um, when I first came to your wonderful city, I was told that it was customary to give a gift of a personal nature. If you are uh, a guest in this such esteemed company. <clears throat> I'm a tinkerer by trade and decided to make something of... Yeah. And uh, decided to ply my trade. As to the subject matter, I'm a, I'm a creature of the desert. And uh, only recently, on a trip to a similar nation as your own, I was uh, transported on an incredible journey with Valkyries through what I understand is the deep sea and I saw during that journey the most incredible creatures of size and majesty and 
when I saw your beautiful city for the first time, I was reminded of that majesty. And so I've brought you this. Ah, what do you think? As you put it uh, upon the table, this is a joke here. As you begin to place it upon the table, you trip it and falls and it breaks. Never to be okay. seen. Yeah. <laughs> Joke Love over. Uh, you place it upon the table. <laughs> uh, roll persuasion. It's like jack save. Yeah. Uh, advantage. It's a good story. All right. I spun it as best I could. I was like, what was the one time that you might have been near an ocean? Uh, persuasion. 13. bad. Shoot. I had to burn both my nat 20s on that past roll. <laughs> uh, you can tell, like, a lot of people are, like, heavily impressed by it. Some, like, get turned off slightly due to the nomenclature people have used uh, to, like, describe this place. It's not the most flattering name, uh, but it's not, like, terribly bad. It's like, oh... And then just like set it in motion. Yeah, it's like, <laughs> uh, they are impressed by like the movement and the intricacy of it, but like some people are like dismissive about it because it's a name uh, that is not too kind to their city. But like some of them are interested. Uh, you do see uh, Galifa, uh very interested, like starry eyed. Uh, again, super into. Uh, water animals of the water uh specifically dolphins but that's outside the point whales are pretty close to dolphin <laughs> she's, si she's the one sitting like beside the tiny dolphin thing yeah <laughs> uh torella is the only one that you don't get a full read on they're like the most diplomatic one thank you uh mr finder was it uh we oui. is it um that's dr finder no. yeah dr professor uh, finder pardon yeah. me <laughs> oh sorry laughing as that happens though uh well, Fala does state oh um if anyone doesn't mind if i could take that after the meeting most appreciated. Like you do see a lot of people are interested in it, mainly because they want the plants. The trumper that hid the flower in their hat probably w for a reason. Yeah. So, like, he's a lot of he's like, seen yeah, this song and dance before. Yeah. <laughs> uh, so you scored big uh, with her, but that's beside the point. Uh, everyone else is like, ooh, plant. More for my collection. Or like, Ooh, more prestige for me. Thank you. So Raven's like whole love that you grow plants, but be careful for that. Isn't, you know, just a warning for no reason. Uh, but Torella does state, thank you for visiting. You have been uh, put into the record that you have uh, traveled here from a great distance. Once you are ready to leave, uh, please let us know. Beyond that, other than private businesses, anything public to you is granted as visitors, as diplomats, uh, from Haven itself. I believe, I don't know which one of you, but I think you were given like documents stating that you have like business here, potentially trying to uh, create a, an established connection with people and things of that nature. I'm not sure who has the documents. Jimmy has the best charisma, but Finder has a bag of holding. So. <laughs> yeah, uh, but as stated beforehand, your main missions here are discover who is trying to murder Cassidy, uh, who leaked out the information, who, which could be the same person, but you never know. Establish a connection with people in power and potentially establish a base here. Uh, while there are other council members here, the ones you need to focus on currently are the head of the council, Torella, and you would for sure pick this up, 
Cassidy's mom. Oh. oh boy, doing range targeting there, a uh, range estimation, that's always reassuring. Um... <laughs> Uh, does the mom know Cassidy went down <laughs> to basically for a date and I'm that person? <laughs> no, she's not aware of that. Uh, okay, Cassidy, thank God. Cassidy spoke with your mom uh, on a one-on-one -on -one basis. It wasn't, oh, uh, okay. I've heard you have a daughter. My daughter might well, be interested it's, in yours. Well, it's like, I didn't know if, you know, Cassidy talked to her mom about, you know, the situation first. Uh, that's a good point. You're not aware of that, actually. Shit. Um, <laughs> she's not eyeing me, is she? She's eyeing all of you, but she's not specifically okay. eyeing you. Okay. Um, well, Cassidy, I this kinda... man you brought home is more effeminate than usual. <laughs> <laughs> Um, I kind of lean over to Raven and whisper, um, do I ask now to, if I can speak with the trees? Uh, one second. Uh, Torella does state, he'll say, if there's anything you need, please let us know. Otherwise, uh, feel free to go along your day, is how things will go. And on cue, Torella does state, thank you for the gifts and thank you for presenting yourselves. If there's anything you need from us, we will try to oblige. Otherwise, you are more than welcome to continue with your day. Raven gives me the nod. Yeah. Okay, then I raise my hand. A uh, question. Uh, yes, Miss Wynn. Um, I hear you got tree like really old trees here. Can I talk to them? We do have a few old trees here. Um. Other than my own residence, the oldest tree in this city is uh, within the council's uh, garden area. Oh, that looks nice. Can I talk to it? So long as you don't harm it in any way. We will, of course, have a station guard nearby, but so long as you don't harm it. Oh, I would never. Very well, then. We don't want any political problems. <laughs> You're more than allowed to. Like, people do not in agree. Uh, writing down a few documents here and there. Torella signs them. Uh, triplicate eventually gives them to Raven <laughs> to give to you. I, I kind of uh, uh, turn to Raven and uh, we got the paperwork and kind of say to him, you know, it's kind of funny they. They, never, they didn't really seem shocked about me talking to plants. <laughs> that I wanted to talk to the tree. <laughs> it is a magical flying city, I suppose. Um, and? Most of the council knows a little bit more um, how magic works down below. Not everyone. And of course, they're all politicians, so they can't exactly show their true feelings. Mm-hmm. The truth be told, there are probably plenty of people who do talk to it. They look at it and say, look at the size of that thing. That is quite true. Some of them might just think you're going to be talking at it, not talking with it. Um, Jemmy's doing the hands out thing like he made a joke. He's like, ah, huh? His <laughs> attendants are, are just like, they have a that's what she said sign. Wait, no, I have another like, question. If it's lonely, can I... Give it a friend. Are you asking Raven oh, or are you asking council? Like, just don't break I... its heart. No, it's like I asked Raven, should I even ask that? Um, Maybe you should ask the tree. I would advise against planting anything else nearby. Uh, but you could potentially ask. Reason. I would just be wary. Again. Growing plants here is difficult, as we need to continuously re-nurture them. Re I'm going to say re-nutrition, even though that's not exactly correct. Re-nutrition the soil uh, quite often. Well, I mean, Ooh, essentially you mean to say fertilize I can help or with that. Yeah, now, now, uh, Raven, now that you uh, say that, I think I can help with that. 
It's also regenerating the soil by planting things like legumes, which are nitrogen fixers to the soil, which is one of the main reasons that soil becomes unsuitable for growth. Anyway. <laughs> Uh, yeah, did you like... hear what I said yeah. to Raven? Uh, Raven does yeah. state. You for sure can. I'm not saying you can't. But again, I would advise caution. You are one of the few people up here that... Uh, obviously, he's whispering this. He's not just shouting this. You are one of the few people that are bound and connected to nature magic. It's very rare up here. I guess... I guess if... Before I do anything, ask permission. Wise. Right? Oh, it's yeah. like they say, consent, please. I would also say it's not so directly. Perhaps say I could perhaps help out with uh, getting more nutrients into the soil. Don't explain how. Just say it in the trade secret. Team. Correct. <laughs> All right, Finder will address the council. Um, I understand there is a, a great deal of your technology in the city that is um, under research, and there is an agreement with Avon uh, regarding this research. So, if there is anything, I would be gra I would ask to be granted leave by the city to uh, assist with any ongoing research, provided the. Um, Lead researcher overseeing the project agrees, of course. No persuasion. A normal persuasion. Hey. Yeah. Uh, council talks through things and then uh, Terrell does state. We do have contracts with Haven due to the circumstances that we face our, find ourselves in. Uh, that being stated, we can't give you beyond what we already have given to Haven. So any live uh, projects we currently still have active, you are welcome to look at them. Currently, we have three. The writing of the tablet. The inert sphere. And the hallways... Of singing. The singing hallways. I don't know why I wrote it that way. Flip it around. Singing hallways in her sphere. I knew a guy who learned the word sphere from. A uh, Final Fantasy game, and he'd never heard it in real life. Like he didn't make the association, so he called it shares for like <laughs> a year. Twenty. Mm -hmm. I whisper quietly to Finder. That tablet they talk of. Do they just have a problem translating it? I couldn't. To tell you I have not uh, not familiar with I don't actually remember they, you said they sent it to section 9 so I don't actually remember they sent a copy to it. not to section 9 they sent uh, a copy to the R&D department which hmm. is a larger se uh, department than just section 9 there's section 1 through 9 uh, potentially more you actually don't know if there's maybe a mysterious section 0 there could be hmm. you don't know uh, <laughs> hint, hint. Uh, that being section said, though, double uh, I believe Section 3 has the tablet. Not that you know that in-game, uh, mm. but you actually don't know the whole circumstance with the tablet itself. Perhaps I might help them translate. I mean, even if R&D has a copy, I've never been told of it. Is there anyone I should speak to regarding the um, location of these researches? 
With the writing of the tablet, uh, you may speak with Councilman, uh, Councilwoman uh, Galafa. Presents Galafa. Uh, she stands up, politely bows. Scott, like the drinking bird. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> yeah. Uh, with the inert sphere, you must speak with head researcher uh, Dwayne. He can be found in this address. Gives you address. <laughs> Dwayne, the inert sphere, Johnson. <laughs> uh, and with the singing hallways, there is no active researcher. Just uh, a location you can go to. However, you should not destroy anything. He's like, but there. don't do that. No. No, it's not like don't do that. It's more like if you do cause any problems such as decaying of the area, please be advised that you may be removed from the premises. Uh, the premises being the city? At the very least, the district that the hallways are found in. In which particular district is this a is is it is it like a rich one uh no the singing hallways are between the lower and middle district Pish -push. to wager Bye. there was one too many bards trying to dance on the walls <laughs> no it's yeah. called the horny hallways uh, the writing of the tablet is in the higher district. The inert sphere is in the lower district, and the singing hallways is in between lower and middle. Well, thank you, Council. Does anyone else have any business for the Council? Mm, I'm good for now. And but if anything, pops, and if anything pops up, we always can uh, send them a message, right? Uh, Raven does nod, and... Hey. <laughs> Go ahead. I would say, hey, that we can do. Of course. Uh, uh, if we didn't have any questions for you, are there any preferred sending hours? For sure, in the morning, as we could get through things uh, by midday. If not, you can send We're it through... We're after lunch, no. <laughs> if it needs immediate attention, you can send it through one of our own personal uh, addresses. Uh, he does ask the council if anyone's willing to offer their addresses to you. No one other than himself and uh, Galva. <laughs> give you uh, this, is all... this is more of a direct message. Um... People don't often like messages in their heads at the middle of the night. Like none of these shadowy figures are gonna give us their address? No. Uh roll persuasion. No, I'm kidding. No, I want this now. <laughs> are we gonna have a shadow figure unveil? Under roll persuasion. Under roll persuasion. Oh, I have to do it. All right. You're the one that asked. No, I was, I was being snarky. May the core I guide you on this no, one. No, I see no, where you're getting at. No, 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 no. I don't even care. I was trying to be funny. <laughs> I didn't need the address because I was just using voicemail. <laughs> this is how a dogma shuts me up. I'll be, I'll be more careful with my jokes next time. I'm sorry, Dean. <laughs> Uh, find your roll for me. A G10. Reroll on 10. Two people throw daggers at you. <laughs> Two people throw daggers at you. Yeah. <laughs> roll 46 plus 5. <laughs> I'm within 5. No. I. I was like, I'm within five feet of Honk, but Honk has to be within five feet of the attacker, I think. There My joke. Well, it's a good thing I was thinking poison damage, which probably wouldn't bother you. Yeah, yeah I drink that stuff. <laughs> I... <clears throat> so as uh, you don't directly ask, 
and <laughs> people do question or not uh eventually you do get one person up here uh oh so give you their address you have no idea who they are what they're about they carry a long blue sword to their side they've been like flipping it in and out of the sheath for quite some time which is why you know it's blue they've been like fidgeting with it they have like a gemstone in the middle of their forehead uh nice dark skin uh curly hair uh in a nice corn roll not a corn roll uh i forget the style of it it's what they've been eyeing finn's creed alcor <laughs> no it's the hairstyle of uh again black panther the bad guy has i just don't mm. remember dreads. the name of it okay yeah um it's close to dreads yeah warmonger yeah i was just, i was thinking of baptiste from overwatch yeah. based on the thing but yeah Either way, i am like, diego toyota nice you look like you hair. could have killed my father prepare uh, to die front words waved uh, they like give you their address and they say, "Sure, I suppose. Uh, if you need anything, pick me up." They seem rather young for the council, although a lot of them appear ages, ageless or like middle age to older. He's like early thirties, late twenties, maybe newly appointed. So he's human, not elven or anything? Uh, it's hard to tell. They look human. Like, there's no features that elven kind. Mm -hmm. There's no... Even the humans up here have, like, features of, like, golden hair, or golden irises, or, like, something uh, ASMR, eccentric. This person Everybody up in here is wearing, like, glamours and fucking, like, magical makeup. Yeah, uh, this person, other than the gemstone in their forehead, just seems like a guy. A guy that's bored. Fiddling with his sword. Yep. Uh, you know, right. his name is full, like his full name is Samuel. He just goes by Sam. Hey, Sammy. No, he's gonna hate that. <laughs> uh... The count, the head councilman, the state. Right then. Well, we do need to get back to our business. Miss Wynn, feel free to speak with the uh, tree in the courtyard. Uh, Mr. Finder, if you do need any more assistance, allow one of our secretaries to assist you on that matter. Or if you, since you do have Miss uh, Galifa's uh, address, as well as the ear of her daughter you are more than welcome to speak with her in your own personal time simple bow if any of the rest of you need anything feel free to write to the council and we'll be as expedient as possible oof thank you very much he didn't even say it he didn't even say it to me but to be referred to as the rest of you <laughs> Sorry, yeah. damn! I cut you off. Nah, you're good. Uh, I was just wondering. I was surprised you actually caught that. Uh, find a roll insight. Ooh. You get nothing. Oh, uh, yeah. But you now have a slight clue. Only because I was, I told you specifically. <laughs> I'm yeah. surprised you caught that. <laughs> yeah. Uh, politely. Yeah, I don't know what it means though. <laughs> politely ushered out, uh, back into the hallway and like eventually outside of the building. They don't like rush you out. It's more like, thank you for coming. If there's anything you need, for sure speak with us. Uh, but they're like busying themselves and eventually it's. The awkward situation of being in a hallway of a building you no longer have business in. Yeah. Out of curiosity, would a passive insight have picked anything up? Ah, uh, what's your passive? 
Um, let's see. I've got the same bonus as I do for perception, which shows a passive of 18, so I assume it's the same for the insight. Uh, uh you... Passive perception, you don't get, um... What do you call it? Uh, proficiency. Do you? I don't think so. So does passive insight, if Maybe that's... You have if like we're a calling that a thing. For it. Uh, that being said, though, I only gave it to Finder because they vocally said something. Yeah, I, I, that's one of the reason I brought up a passive, which just in case it was something that I like, wouldn't have been something I'd have tried to pick up on, but if it was something that happened to uh, be noticed. And uh, and regarding that calculation, yeah, it wasn't so much the proficiency, but the thing is, is that the character sheet calculated my passive uh, perception at 18, and my numbers for insight are the same, so I'd assume it'd be the same passive. Um, I mean, that doesn't make sense. Uh, but yeah. again, I only gave it to Finder because I'm surprised he picked up on something. Yeah, yeah, it's fine. I was just curious. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Uh, for sure, I thought it'd take like a couple sessions. Nah, you you got something, but you don't know what you got. <laughs> My working theory is that me and Wynn actively tried to like help and gave a gift. Whereas the rest, you guys didn't necessarily, like, you chipped in, but you didn't be like, this is my gift. You were like, I help. I don't know. One or the other. <laughs> well, I didn't <laughs> have anything. I specifically stated that. I mean, the only thing I could have given him was my amulet from Eberron, but that's my spell focus. <laughs> I literally don't have anything extra. I don't know, man. A... Just imagine not having a skill or anything you carry just to throw away. <laughs> Imagine not being able to conjure something out of nothing. <laughs> I know, right? How pedestrian. Wow. <laughs> oh, uh, heartless. No wonder you dress like you do, Finn. No! It's oh! 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 I'm kidding, you got nice clothes recently. Dude, yeah. harsh. Yeah, but yeah, you can't even give away <laughs> I have been looking. I have been looking pretty darn dapper since I was knighted. Thank you, and I could I could really gale them with stories of the heroic deeds of the of the Korai knights of old, or you know, sing a song of Eberron that nobody's heard. Just don't have a physical thing. A rock with a symbol of your order. Mm -hmm. uh, so I have a question. Spin a yarn. Uh, well, I was gonna, um, say that, um, so, is it okay if I go talk to a tree now, or should we wait? We can oh, this I've got to now. see. We can for sure talk to a tree. Uh, I've been before, uh, Raven does say, I've been here before, I can definitely lead you to the location. Oh, that'd be great. What is everyone else doing? Should we meet somewhere later, or what's happening? Uh, I'm Cassidy going to the stay. tree. Uh, we can for sure meet later. I can get you guys to our barracks or a nice little inn in town uh, that you could sleep at. Uh, Finn, do you, do you want to go to the tree with uh, Wynn or do you want to go uh, see this tablet? Um, is there a way to do both? I would dearly love to see the, uh, what the tree has to say, and I think uh, I might I... be able to help with the tablet. I can read pretty much anything. So you're going back to Haven? No, they have a copy. The original they have the tablet here. here. They have the original yeah. tablet here. Yeah. Okay. Sounded a little different we, there, but okay. We only have a copy, but, um, okay. I, I... I don't know why everyone's coming to me. I'm just talking to a fucking tree. The tree's oh. not going to talk out loud. Oh, hey, I'm not coming to you. <laughs> when in that case, uh, yeah. In, it's like, in that case, I, yeah, I think, find it. So... Yeah, yeah, I think it's uh, best of, to utilize your talents to go with Finder. Okay. I was going to say that, yeah. In that case, uh, Finder, why don't we uh, make our way to the tablet and see if we can help? And once, uh, Wynn, once you're done with the tree, perhaps we'll meet up with Cassidy and her mother and talk about the sphere and perhaps dating. Okay. 
What? What? I'm leaving. <laughs> what? Ouch. Ouch. You were so mean. <laughs> Oh, I'm starting to get a bit warm here. I'm gonna go ahead and I'm gonna have my uh, attendants help me take off the coat, and I'll uh, leave that in their possession. <laughs> yeah. Uh, you can just flomp it on them like their coat rack. Like, oh, thanks. Yeah. Um. Oh, I imagine it more like they actually kind of come up and together, sort of help it off of me, sort of thing. Oh, like you do like the T pose and the. <laughs> yeah. Uh, for they, all they, they, purposes, they from your shoulders. Jamie's attendants are here. They're just in the background. <laughs> they just don't go into danger. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. Uh, oh my god! Said... And now you're now you switch to your old token. <laughs> <laughs> well, it doesn't have a coat on. I might have to start making some more. <laughs> I mean, I Jimmy's the only on. one that gave me a picture for <laughs> this. If anyone wants a flip token by next week, give me. Images. Well, it's like. Uh, how did you get the AI thing? Can you drop the link in chat? Oh, sure. Yeah, it's for... Uh... <laughs> Everybody's just gonna be feeding <laughs> quotes into this thing over over the weekend. <laughs> uh, it feels, it feels gross, because, like, I know yeah. people I, I... who do art and stuff, and... We, we yeah, shouldn't be using AI to take away creative fucking jobs or like creative aspects of our life we should be using it to automate shit that's boring like data entry well i have no artistic talent but uh, i spent like 45 minutes playing with it and came up with like 80 images <laughs> Jeez. <laughs> topic for another time but for now <laughs> uh Finder, Finn, Ray, and Cassie in one group. Jemmy, Wynn, Raven, and another. Cassie's going with Finder and Finn to help you to get to the... You wanted to go to the tablet, Finder? Uh, just because I feel like that's the best combo. Uh, yeah. Is like Finn and Finder. Uh, yeah. That is... Yeah, I can, the... I, can, I, I can translate and then he can figure it out. Yeah. Look, uh, we, already did, we already did some of that in the Valkyrie place. Yeah. Uh, that is under the jurisdiction of Cassidy's mom, so for sh she for sure can get you in there without needing her mom. Uh, but afterwards, she's going to head out with Ray uh, in town to get a nice room for you guys. Oh no, what if we get attacked in this highly secure area? No, it's fine. <laughs> uh, Raven's going to leave Win and Jem lead Wynn and Jemmy to the tree. Unfortunately, though, I don't have maps for that. I didn't have the time. So, Theater of the Mind time. No worries, man. Theater of the Mind is just as good. Yeah. <laughs> Someone gets bored, they'll draw a tree in the background. It'll be fine. <laughs> Witty statements will float in the air. Yeah. Uh, as you all head out to your own destinations, uh, let's go with Finder and Finn first. Ray begins to take you to the sphere, not sphere, tablet area, and Cassidy begins to talk with a few guards until they allow you in. It takes roughly 10 to 15 minutes where you're at because it's in the high district, but you're able to get there just fine. By the time you enter into the area, uh, Cassidy does state, Ow. A bit of history about this tablet. Uh, it is ancient, far older than what we are currently able to date. Uh, perhaps, Mr. Finder, you can assist with this. Uh, perhaps the... Don't remember the name of carbon dating things, other than just carbon dating things. I think there's a different name. I mean, no, that's the name of it. You carbon dated. Yeah. It's carbon-14. It, uh... It's a rarer element than regular carbon-12, and it decays at a very fixed rate. So you can tell by other, you know, you can tell how much of the radiation has gone away from it. Yeah. However, it does have, like, a plus or minus, which is pretty large, but whatever. <laughs> yeah. Uh, it is quite large and intricate, which is why we were only able to give a copy to Haven. 
uh, to research and study. The writing is old, hard to describe and hard to discern. Uh, Finn, you did state that... Sorry, right now she's in business mode, so she would say uh, Mr. Finn. Uh, Mr. Mm-hmm. Finn, you did state you have some inclination with languages. Uh, yes. Mr. Finn Finnegan the Finn? <laughs> <laughs> Sorry, business mode. Uh, Can I think this way? Uh, yes. Well, other than that, the actual tablet itself is housed within the large chamber hall, uh, a very old building. We do believe it. if this tablet can be described, we may be able to find a hidden passageway or door without needing to break into anything, causing potential damage to the city and its foundation. So it is a, a map of sorts, but uh, verbal, you think? Uh, we do believe it's some type of verbal uh, component. Well, obviously not verbal. That was wrong. But you know what I mean. The map with words. It's, yeah, uh, it's, it's going to be either instructions or possibly a riddle. But uh, if you're having trouble translating or understanding the words, I can I can do that. When he does that, so I will uh, tap on it and make sure that it uh, has no circuitry or something. Very well. Uh, you guys are led into a very large hallway, uh, entering inside of a building. Uh, to the extent of that, it's basically, if you've ever seen any uh, show where it's like, oh, this is the chamber of the king. You have an audience with them. Pillars on the left and right side. A uh, chair standing in front of you with steps leading up to chair. Uh, mm-hmm. Remove the Bro. chair and put a giant disc made out of potentially marble uh, with like very intricate writing on it that you cannot read. Uh, Finder might be able to. Sorry, not Finder. Finn might Finn. be able to. Yeah. Uh, Finn is definitely going to try. And Finder is going to poke around it to see if there's anything other than like, is it just a stone disc? there's anything other than that that's what i'm trying to find out yeah um drawing time Pickle. so uh giant disc pillar 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 they're more succinct and you know matching than this yeah I would also like to inspect the pillars, as I now think they're important. (laughs) (laughs) Yeah, is there writing or anything on the pillars as well? Window. Window. Uh, There's some. Okay. Okay, um, I'd like to try to read the... I'd like to try to read the pillars as I walk past them. You know, each one at a time. Yeah, and then housed in room. And I'd like to just ask Cassidy and Ray real quick. This is the um, this is the room that all of this was discovered in. Nothing has been substantially moved. There have been some copies of the uh, giant stone uh, crafted and created, but nothing else has been altered or changed. Uh, Finn, as you go towards the pillars, you do see like a few words written on it. Not an extreme amount. The main focus, from what you can tell, was clearly the giant slab of stone in front of you. Uh, one of the pillars does read fire. The one in the middle then reads water. And the one uh, farthest end reads earth. Okay. Fire, the, one in the, water, the, the one that isn't the middle reads love. <laughs> it's, the, it's the fifth element. All right. Okay. Um, <laughs> all right. So that's uh, fire, water, and earth. And then on this side, these three pillars. Uh, do, 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 do. I'm just going to write them out so you don't have to worry about it. Is it air on the fourth one? 
No. Air might be the conspicuously missing element Ooh. considering the location. Uh, <laughs> oh. The next one reads uh, Mercury. The one after that uh, reads Liquid. Oh, well, hold up. Uh, uh, the four pillars? There's four pillars. There's six uh, pillars. Three on each side. Uh, okay. I was the, okay. Yeah, the three pillars on the left there, the fire, water, and earth going from the bottom to top. Yeah, yep, 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 yep. And then the other three pillars going from bottom to top is mercury, liquid, and gas. Well, I inform you of this. Not 100% sure about the scientific implications. And now I uh, do my best to read the big one. Okay. Uh, ba -ba 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 -ba. Finder ever a scientist is going to go to the one that reads water and spray it with water. It's spray, it's spray, it's spray. <laughs> Yeah. Yeah. Uh, reading the tablet as Finder begins to spray water on the pillar, uh, it does read The light shining upon will see all. All that will be seen will be hidden in the darkness. Within the gray, things in the middle will be drawn the things drawn will be in one I do apologize you're going to have to write that out that was a little a little bit confused Finn's going to well, reread that <laughs> well the, the beginning there's definitely like the, the sun or the light will reveal so there's got to be a correct um time of day so I, you know have you ever seen uh, <laughs> the lost ark <laughs> yeah i was about to say indiana jones i think i've heard stories about that guy <laughs> yeah okay no i understand that i just yeah we're gonna have to do, this is gonna be a lot a more term. I'll, re I'll rewrite this in a simpler term have you heard the you legend of the, the prince of persia <laughs> but it's in, in the gray, a shape is drawn. Was that? There's the pillar or the windows are between the two pillars. There's like only so, m only so many uh, trajectories the light can take. Yeah, a simplified version of the, the light will show what's in the darkness. The darkness will hide things from the light. Huh. Hmm. Riddles? If we're going to think about this riddle but for a while, should we go to the other group? Probably. Or, yeah. We move over to the big tree. Um, The big tree is big. Some might say the biggest tree that has ever lived. You know, if you've only lived up here. To others, it's just a very big tree. Cool. So, uh, yeah, when, 
makes her way there. Anyone stalking her? Um, I'm not. Jamie. <laughs> By the way, I love Jamie's outfit when he takes off this uh, huge like fur coat. Just be like a pure white tank top and like suspenders that are like pure gold and gemstones. <laughs> Big li like Liberace style. Yeah. Um, as you make it to the big tree, uh, you do see that there is a guard station not that far away. Uh, obviously they have an attendant here to make sure no one disrupt the nature here. Uh, it's actually a penalty. Penalty? That ah. it breaks the law. <laughs> uh, Raven does state again. Oh, a felony. Thank you. I could not remember how to pronounce the word. Uh, Raven states, again, don't mar the tree in any way. Don't somehow catch it on fire. Other than that, you should be good. Not that I believe you would do that, but... Why would I do that? That's just me. Fair enough. <laughs> Ugh. Not that you'd try to do it on purpose or anything, but maybe best not to embarrass the tree either. Oh yeah, different cultures. Right. Well, <laughs> uh, whenever you're ready, Miss Wen. Oh yeah, I'm ready. Very well then. Uh, he like shouts in the guard that, hey, uh, Miss Wen has been given access to the tree. Uh, any and all circumstances that will soon follow are governed underneath the council, etc., cetera, etc. Cetera. Is Jimmy and the attendants allowed in too? Yeah. Okay. Uh, so, in what are you doing? Uh, is Raven coming too, or not? I don't know. <laughs> it depends if you need him. To find my way back, maybe, yeah. <laughs> I'll just have the attendants keep uh, track of the route. Yeah. Uh, okay. Uh, <laughs> Raven will join. Um, I would like to uh, cast Speak with Plants. Yeah. Hmm. What? Is this gonna work? What? Nothing. I'm not trying to make you worry for no reason. Don't worry about it. Bullshit. I. No, you're good. I don't believe you. <laughs> wise, wise idea. Uh, as you cast Speak with Plants. Uh, at the large tree found in the uh, garden uh, pertaining to this tree specifically uh, well focusing on this tree specifically your mind syncs up with the language the plants speak with the language that the tree speaks uh, as that happens you hear a it's funny you would for sure begin to see the tree uh, as itself and you'd understand its words. But in a quick instant, you hear static as if something similar to a signal is like screeching in the back of your mind and then like negates itself as if the pitch of the screech has like gone too high for you to hear. Uh, and at that point in time, you do hear, finally, the tree uh, say, uh, You all right? You've been, like, there for, like, a minute. You see the tree. Uh, you hear the tree. Yeah. Say. I don't know. I was hearing some, like, static. It's kind of giving me a headache. Oh, that's, like, been here. Oh, I don't. 
don't know if it's going to be relevant, but I'm just going to go ahead and uh, keep pinging uh, Win with uh, expert guidance periodically, just in case. Yeah. While also taking great interest in how this uh, conversation looks to the outside world. Oh yeah, no, uh, Rin, Win is basically resting on the tree, talking to it. Mm -hmm. The tree so basically probably, just the, the tree's probably like reacting somehow, you know. So we kind of yeah. be interesting okay, to see. Like Jimmy, okay, so like... sit, sitting on a tree branch or like lounging, Catwoman style, resting against the roots. I would roots. just lounging. Yeah. Uh, Look, looking like you're talking to yourself. Good, Jimmy. I, uh, with your high perception, although no one else can really depict this or see this. Jimmy, you do see like some of the branches sway in a, a different direction where the wind is swaying them. So like it's actively reacting to something. You can't hear it for sure, but you can tell that some of the movements the tree makes, some of the whooshing that happens within the leaves, foliage, it's different than it should be. So like it is responding to whatever wind is saying to it, but it, not with words. Jimmy's a secret dwarf. He's like, plants are fucked up. <laughs> Wait, so the static's always been here? Like, you hear it constantly? Well, you drown it out eventually. Like, why it's there? Uh, like, it's near my roots. So it's like, I think in the ground. Like, how deep do your roots go? Like... I don't know. Out of game, I don't know. Uh, at least, probably 100 feet, but... I don't know how deep 2,000-year-old tree roots would go. Actually, it depends on the tree, because a lot of trees uh, grow outwards more than downwards it depends on the soil down to the roots. as well and also depends on the soil uh in my mind i was thinking this to be like a sycamore tree mm, sycamores can get massive i mean it's two thousand yeah. years old i mean like how like how big around is it well and plus how tall this is, is a special it? tree in a fantasy world so the roots can do whatever they want yeah very true <laughs> The roots uh, can go as far as they can. In 2,000 years, I mean, it's going to reach the maximum of where they can go. Yeah, I'm going to say 100 feet down. Uh, at the very least, very th thick tree. Uh, <laughs> fantasy sycamore, not a true sycamore. Uh, it does. Well, even a true sycamore, it's like I said, like we said, it's the soil, the available. Yeah. You know, it's like a bonsai. But, um, you could you could make a sycamore bonsai tree. Yeah, but anyways, fantasy world, fantasy rolls. But um, it's like so I asked it deeper than the uh, roots, though. Is the finalized sentence? <laughs> oh wow! Like, do you feel like energy coming from it too? from deep down in the earth or just that static kind of both like, yeah i've been feeling a weird energy lately too mm. best way i can describe it it's like energy that's there and that some of the stuff here can tap into it yep i got it i got it it's just a constant thing, right? Yeah. But besides the static, how are you doing, friends? Kind of hungry. Are they treating you right here? Uh, I mean, kinda. Literally, two thousand years is the best care they can manage. <laughs> like, I think they try their best. They have a couple people here pruning, making sure I don't die and stuff uh i like lose a lot of my friends though because they're keeping trying to make the ground around me and more nutrient 
Nutritious. Nutritious. But it's the other way around. With more plants, the more nutrients go into the soil. Mm. Depends on which plants, but you know that. Yeah. Uh, I don't know. Maybe they don't know that. Well, just so you know, you're not going to relocate the thing. <laughs> of course I'm not going to relocate it, but maybe, you know, grow some friends for him. He's lonely. We need some bean buds. Yeah, like, my oldest friend well, here is Chuck. Uh, like, brushes some of its uh, branches, and Jimmy, you do see, like, a squirrel. Flying squirrel, specifically. Like, rummage around where the branches are. He's, like, seven. Oh, hi, Chuck. I go through my bag and bring out an, uh, a nut for him. Flies down, grabs it, and, like, parachutes down to the ground and, like, runs back into the tree. I don't know about magical squirrels, but that is... That's an aged squirrel. That's right on the edge of his lifespan if it's a regular. <laughs> yep. But, uh, uh... It looks like you have a great friend. Yeah. Like but, him and his um, family have to... been my friends for ages. Oh, that's nice. Well, if I could help grow some more friends, uh, I would, but I would need to ask permission from the council, I guess. I mean, I wouldn't say no to more friends. Only problem is, though, sometimes my friends grow like a little weird. And those are the ones they first take. We they grow weird? How so? They like are different. Do you know in different. what way? No. Uh they've grown like some roses here once. And they were like red for a while. And then a new batch came and they were like Orangey. And it was like huh, that is from weird. the same. Same maybe... bush? Bush, yeah. I don't know how you would describe it. <laughs> I mean, we would know full well that there are sets of genes, and if there's only one bush there, maybe it was cross pollinating with itself, and maybe they were just growing older in the lifespan like green peppers or red peppers. Yeah, uh, but the way you describe it, though, uh, it wouldn't... I'm only saying this because I don't want things to be confused. Yeah, for sure, that's a real thing. Uh, the way the tree describes it, it would not work that way. Like, the next it's generation something... altered for some reason, shape or form. It's something unnatural. Yeah. Yeah. Alright, um... Hmm. I wanted to ask you, uh, my friend here, and I motion to Raven. Raises uh, his hand. <laughs> has a question. Oh, by the way, what is your name? Do you have a name? I have like a couple of them. Some people call me well, like what? that big tree, or like that well, one right there. What do you want me to call you? Um. I don't know. Is Kevin a name? Kevin is a wonderful name. Okay. Okay. I, I like hey, are naming it Kevin? Well, he said to call him Kevin. Huh. I pat Kevin uh, gently. It's a great name. But uh, my friend Raven here uh, was wondering, uh, long, long ago, uh, before uh, you grew, uh, weird things happened here. Would you have any knowledge of that from... Uh, the tree you came from, or hearing other people uh, talk about things. Apparently, something happened and their ancestors lost all their memories. 
So, so they don't know how a lot of things here actually work. That was 3,000 years before this tree. But when you said that, I could only imagine like a flashback, like a hard flashback to like someone named like a little boy planting a seed and nurturing this little tree. And then, you know, like years later, there's a little tombstone that says Kevin beside it. Fuck you. Anyways, <laughs> going back to my scene. <laughs> Sorry. Asshole. No, I can't stop picturing it. <laughs> Anyways, back to my scene. Such what tragedy. does Kevin say? <laughs> Kevin does state. That's like older than me, but there were like some stories passed down from other trees that were older than me that got derooted. Uh, something about like the great derooting. Like many voices were snuffed out as if they were moving too far away. Oh, the Jedi are going to feel this one. The great, de uh, the great derooting. So what what we called it more about plants? that? Yeah. Oh, that's I. And I think I know exactly what that is. That's so cool. Can you come on, dude? <laughs> and I'll, sh I'll shut up. I'm sorry. I'm sorry. I'm sorry. I'll shut up. I'm sorry, but it's happening a lot. <laughs> but um, yeah, I asked the tree. Well, what did the trees speak of, as you said? And tell me more about this great derooting. Uh, the best way I can describe it is as if the plants around us were being ripped out of the ground, or maybe we were, and we couldn't hear the rest of the forest. We as like a whole, I wasn't there personally, uh, but like we were moving away and we couldn't hear the voices anymore. The voices of our neighbor. Voices of, like, the forest next to us. Wait, could the great derooting be this chunk of Earth actually separating from its original place? Maybe. I'm not sure. And you can tell, like, that Kevin doesn't really know. Uh, they've only known this area. <laughs> and has only, like, heard story and legend. Actually, I'm curious about to... something. I just want to try a quick experiment here real quick. Light it uh, on fire. Oh. No, I'm not that kind of a scientist. Um, so, Kevin, I don't know if you can understand me, but if you can, would you let Wynn know that you can? What's that one say? Uh, he's asking if you can understand him. No. <laughs> Sorry, he can't. But I can translate uh, uh, for you. Oh, that's okay. I was just curious. I'll let you uh, continue the lead. You seem to have a better way with plants. Druidic? I can understand kind of that. He doesn't know. <laughs> and I'm going to guess that is not the slight... There's no way that is a dwarf variety of plants, so probably doesn't know dwarvish. No. Uh, but... Uh, but go on. I was going to say, uh, but to continue that... Uh, he does state, uh, the only other story we do tell is, like, the Great Render. The Great Render? Uh, can you tell me about that? Yeah. Uh, it's an earlier tale before the derooting. Uh, it was like some of our neighbors just went silent, and we never heard from them again. Oh, I, I am uh, relaying this to Raven, see if uh, he has 
if he knows any ancient stories that can co uh, collaborate with this. Yeah. Uh, when you're cooperating with Raven and Jemmy, because he's also there, uh, Raven does state, I am not sure about any of these tales as they are told through a plant's perspective. But perhaps... At least great... it's something. Yes, that's quite true. Perhaps the great rendering implies... This is only a theory, but potentially a working one. You know how our cities, you know, on the ground, known as the flying whale. Yeah. It'd be a weird thing if they shaped it as a whale. There are theories that some of the city itself broke off at one point. Yeah, that's what I was thinking about the great derooting or something. Oh, and he also says there's like uh, a like major energy and static coming from like beneath his roots and his roots go down like a mile. So like past his roots, there's something like that. And awesome. when I was trying to uh, first uh, connect with him, I was hearing some major static. Oh. Before I was able to converse with him. That... And with the energies I've been feeling too, it's... There's something down there. That would make sense. This is only working theory as no one has been able to breach too far into the core of the city itself. But there is working theory that there is some type of magical engine down there. Hmm. Would make sense, but it does kind of make the trees and plants a little uncomfy but they said you know after a while they can just like tune it out oh and growing plants um here uh sometimes they go weird it's like kevin here was talking about his friend a rose bush that was growing red roses but then out of nowhere boom orange Interesting. like unnatural yes mm. i would advise not showing your gifts to anyone outside of your own personal company miss when because if people do realize that you're able to do it quite quickly grow plants specifically they might try to unethically recruit you at least those that are willing to break the law okay well it's like i do want to help this place and you know kevin is a little lonely he does have his little friends and i offer another uh uh acorn for the squirrel or chipmunk or whatever it is it was a flying squirrel. I yeah, like flying look squirrel. towards I... the area <laughs> the flying squirrel is at. In a different area, a baby flying squirrel catches it <laughs> and runs back into the tree. Oh. Kevin did say yeah. him and his family. Yeah. But um. Yeah, he's he's he likes that he has those friends. He's been with him for a very long time. But he misses his other friends, and I kind of motion motion to the empty ground around us. I mean, that's fair. They do grow plants here seasonally, but then they root, unroot them for some reason. I always assumed it was because for. Uh, it's labor. because the plants grow weird. Do they not try to grow anything uh, from the main tree? Uh, other than clipping the tree, they have. They're not allowed to. At least, not according to an ordinance given by the councilman. Uh, I'm going to butcher his name unless I look at it. It's by the councilman, uh, Torella.
Who was the main guy that was speaking with you uh, when you were in the council chambers? Not even naturally, like, uh, excuse me. Not even naturally, like, you know, acorns or pine cones falling from the tree. Uh, everything is systematically grown, if grown. If there are things that aren't within that, within the scheduled allotted growing time is removed. And if what Miss Wynn is saying is accurate, it may be to try to minimize any cross pollination or the like to get accurate measurement if I had to assume. Yeah, it, it seems like there's more to it than just trying to keep the nutrients in the soil. I'll get more feelers out on this, but this has been very enlightening. Thank you, Miss One. And looks You're towards Kevin. Glad to help. Mr. Kevin. Uh, he says a thank you, uh, Mr. Kevin. Oh. Uh, I don't think I'm a Mr. though, but okay. I'm like sure. a tree. Now, what is this? You're assuming the patriarchy here? <laughs> uh, you don't hear. <laughs> yeah, but I couldn't but, resist um, the joke. <laughs> yeah, um, before I go, I can leave you with one gift. I could help uh, nurture your soil a little bit. Oh. Uh, okay. <laughs> yeah, watch out for dietary restrictions and allergies. <laughs> uh, but yeah, when what are you up to? Well, first I'm gonna ask Raven. Is this something I need to ask uh, one of the council members for? Depends on what you're trying to do. Well, I can do it the normal way and, you know, uh, mix some things that I have and introduce it to his soil to help uh, nurture him and add more nutrients into the soil. Or I could just, you know, do a little and I kind of look around and like wave my fingers and hands like, you know, like magic. <laughs> Not saying it, but, you know. Mm. If you do do it the normal way, hence the not magical way, we would need to write down what you put in, etc., cetera, etc. Cetera, but it would be potentially allowed. If you do it magically, stealth would be appropriate. I look around. Are there like eyes watching us? There's like a guard. 30-ish feet away. Like, keeping an eye on you from time to time, looking around, looking at Jemmy sometimes, and then okay. looking at you. Um, can I walk around the tree to the other side so the guard can't see me? <laughs> um, How long does it take to cast a spell? Oh, shit. I may not do it. Yeah, I, I believe I, I'm it takes gonna... eight hours. Yeah, yeah I'm I not going to do it. Takes eight hours to do the I mean, one you yeah, I eight just, hours for I like an entire acre. Hours. You're doing it for a no, tree. Eight, it, eight hours is for like a half mile in every direction for an entire year. Yeah, 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 yeah. But you're doing it for a singular tree. You can definitely like thin the length of time down. Okay, so just a yeah. Right? Just for this little plot. Yeah. Um, you still require stealth, but I will give you advantage. Uh, the DC to beat would be... Let's make it an average DC. Let's make it 13. A little hard, but not impossible. Given the size of the area, what about just casting outside the compound, but within range of the spell? I guess that could also work. I 
and only take uh, needs to be 150 feet. That would be out of the cone. Out, like around the walls. Okay. Is there no like visual component you need? No, uh, if you do the long component, it's a half mile in every direction. You can't always see that far, so I guess you don't really need to see everything you're doing. I mean, you would be spatially aware of another location. I don't know why I went low. Like, <laughs> like, is there like an inn or something around here where I can just like post up for eight hours to do this to help Kevin? Again, if you're just helping Kevin, you don't need the eight hours. You need like a minute. Okay, so you can cast it at a much smaller radius, but quicker to cast. So, okay. Yeah. So, uh. All right. Um, I'll tell Kevin, well, to be safe because, uh, people here, uh, don't really know of my abilities. I will take my leave now, but. Oh, when? If you give me a moment, I might be able to help. I just need to formulate something real quick. Um. Oh, as Jimmy is formulating, uh, and when saying their goodbyes to the tree, and then gonna help him out in a little bit, uh, the tree does state, "Okay, feel free to like stop on by. I think. Uh, yeah. Oh, um, also be careful out there. Recently, there's been like some weird people in masks." roaming around the streets at night. I don't know what that's about, but I can like barely see them uh, through the over the walls of like this place. Uh, Raven, do you know anything about that? Uh, weird masks, uh, weird mask individuals roaming the streets at night. That's news to me. Yeah, Kevin here says he can see them uh, a bit over the walls. Another thing to investigate. Uh, looks towards Kevin. Thank you, Kevin. I don't know what he's Green, saying, but... Just thank you. Okay. You're welcome. Kevin says you're welcome. See, I told you, Raven, that... And I pat uh, Kevin's trunk. See, I told you. She's... Trees can hold a no lot of knowledge. I have no doubt. I just can't speak with them personally. And in the distance, 30 feet away, you hear a guard. Hey, hey, hey! Watch the hands. Kevin said it was okay. Jeez. So, is it just the one guard? It's primarily the one guard. Um, I mean, are there others in the room? Because I've got a got an idea, but it kind of depends on what the whole situation is. Uh, essentially, big tree area around is currently barren because planting different plants in different times. Uh, one guard currently in this area. When you get out of this area, it becomes a bigger, like, small little planting area. Uh, other people are roaming around, but this area has been cordoned off for you guys uh, by the word of the council to give like basically oh visitors are here give them the lay of the land while they're here so they can do whatever and then like later on like not stop that but like, The wall, I can do it. No need to, you know, be risky. Oh, fair enough. I just didn't want you to miss out on your opportunity. Especially if it's something that Kevin requested. Just so odd to say. It's alright. I still, I'm still able to do it. I don't need to be, you know, that close. 
Okay. Yeah, so, uh, so um, I'm gonna have to say goodbye for now. I will try to be back. And I will try to do my thing to help the uh, soil uh, become nutritious for you. That'd be very nice. Well, take care, Kevin. Take care. <sighs> oh yeah, and Wen is basically like already kind of walking. It's like, oh yeah, turns around. We're leaving now. I say to Raven. <laughs> <laughs> Raven nods. Well, I can't understand the tree. I can't understand you, Miss Wen. Oh, that's good. Oh, question I've... It. Oh, sorry. Go ahead. Yeah, it's like, well, that's good. I love talking to you. Hi. Uh, Jimmy, you were saying. Since you mentioned uh, th th creatures like squirrels and stuff, how, op like, how open is this? I mean, it's not like a sealed interior or anything like that? It's walled off, but it's not like... It's not like dome, uh, impenetrable. It's like uh, a nice area within the rich part of the city. All right. Well, what's right of your shot of the guards? Uh, you know, when uh, uh, aren't you in tune with various animal forms? Uh, you could probably fly right up in the tree branches and uh, be right there with Kevin casting that spell. And you know, how often do people look up? And look at that dense canopy. Mm, I don't want to get in trouble and make things harder for our friends. Okay, fair enough. Had to try. <laughs> the canopy of... I know, and thank you. <laughs> the canopy of the treetop is visible, like, just barely. Uh, hence why Kevin said, oh, I saw these people in masks. So when you do, you can take a minute to, like, focus in energy around Kevin to finally make sure that the nutrition in the soil is good. Yeah. Yeah. And it's uh, good for, like, what, a year? Yeah. Uh, Raven nods, Jimmy nods, and, like, Raven does say, right. Well, if your friends are still at the tablet area, I can make way. We can make way there, and I can show you. Yeah, that'd be great. Kevin was so nice. I hope I get to see him again. Oh, that did seem to be a uh, quite the productive conversation. It was uh, every bit as entertaining as I hoped, and uh, actually quite enlightening as well. Even only here in the one side of it. Um, I mean, I heard you mention something about a derooting. The great derooting is what the trees call it. Apparently, um, just one day, the trees over here stopped hearing the other trees nearby. It's like they were being ripped out of the earth. Oh, that sounds pretty dire different, for a plant. Different from the great rendering. Oh, that was the other one I meant to ask about. I'd forgotten the name because I heard you say that too. Yeah, that's when they lost contact with the whole forest nearby. And was the great? What was it again? Rending? Yeah, that's when they lost con. They lost contact with great. Uh, like some great forces nearby. Yeah. Yeah, apparently mm. these stories have been 
passed down from tree to tree. See, I told you, Raven, and I kind of playfully uh, uh, knock him on the shoulder. See, I told you, trees have great knowledge. All you have to do is ask. I have expected you just to say, I playfully sock him in the face. No, I playfully kick him in the nuts. <laughs> <laughs> just yell out, nut tap. Uh, he nods, like, he can't do it himself, but he does respect your, uh, own skills. Quite right. Uh, we move over to Finn and Finder. Any luck? All right. Um, oh, Finn walks over to Ray and Cassidy, um, telling them the riddle. I ask, uh, is there any place in the city that's always dark. I mean, this is a large city. Is there an underground to it? Uh, Ray does state. There are a few places that are underground, but not many. Uh, we slowly go further and deeper into the ground, but there's only so far we can go. The only place that currently stands out that is like perpetually in the darkness uh, is the room where the inert sphere is. And find your enchant a few things, well, with like thaumaturgy or... I don't know if I can do four things, but... The light from the windows casting through the pillars. I can we like match up fire with like gas and... What were the other ones? You know, liquid water. Um... Yes, that's still a bit of a conundrum, but I think I have an idea if we can uh, get to the uh, sphere, I might have a way to set, shed some light on the subject. You don't uh, think... Hmm? Cassidy? Uh, Cassidy does state, uh, we can for sure do that. You've been given... Uh, Finder has been given clearance to be allotted there. Uh... If you'd like. Uh, and Finder, yeah, you can definitely, like, enchant some things to cast light on things. Uh, to, like, match up the pillars or, like, try to, I don't know, cast light between pillars. Uh, if you, you want to try that, Finder. Yeah. I mean, okay. Am I going to waste a bunch of time? I mean, you're not really wasting on. time. I, yeah. I, I think I can, I, th I think I can uh, light our way a little bit. I will state finders intelligent enough that they can enchant a few things to cast light, uh, to like cast shadows long enough that it hit other pillars within rooms. A honk can literally cast darkness. Mm -hmm. uh, you also have that lantern of darkness. Yeah, that's what honk does. I attached it to yeah, it. He, he, yeah, mm -hmm. he built it into honk's head, yeah. Uh, da, 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 da. Okay, well, but if the room is already perpetually, do one. I if the room is already, per, if if the room is already perpetually in darkness, we have one half. We I mean, just need isn't. to shed some. No, no, not this room, but you said the sphere room. Yeah, is in perpetual yeah. darkness. I think uh, if that's already there, then we just need some light. The other half of the riddle. And we'll see where the shadow is, the gray in the middle. I was not to ask the shadow on your hypothesis finds her, her fin, time finds her. But um, I think it might have been, it's my opinion since it's referring to the shadows cast by these pillars and perhaps cast light and shadow upon the disc. Oh, that is an idea. Um, looking around um, and asking Finder's opinion of the the, 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 geom the geometry of the room, um, do you think there's a specific spot where uh, light would be most useful to cast on the pillars? Well, there are four windows, I think, at certain times of day. 
The pillars will cast shadows on different orientations of the disc, and I wonder if the pillars... Uh, is it one side that is like fire, water, earth, and the other side is like plasma, or what was it, like gas? Mercury, liquid, liquid and gas, yeah. Mm -hmm. This side uh -huh. is fire, water, and earth from bottom to top, and then it's this side which is mercury, liquid, and gas from bottom to top. But... Some, uh, I, my only assumption is that uh, during certain times of the day, certain shadows will be cast. Perhaps we can simulate that with our artificial light. Otherwise, we'll have to wait a whole day here and write down our findings. Well, if you wish, I could stand right in front of the windows and... Uh, give the artificial light we are uh, looking for. It's about the combination. Alright, so can you produce a bright light? I can do I one. Assume. I can do one as well. We need two more there are four windows. Yeah. Um, Am I on the right track or are we wasting time? <laughs> you are, honestly. You are complicating it though. So I'm going to refine it even further. Uh, Finn and Finder, roll insights. <coughs> yes. I'll give Finder advantage. And can the core I guide me? Sure. Insight. Insight check. 19. 19. Four. And a four. 19. Nice. <laughs> Okay, uh, examining all these things, getting the lights set up and all that, you can tell that the first things are, the first pillars are fire, water, earth. Ones to the right are mercury, liquid, and gas. Based off of the connection you have in the riddle and the, essentially, the elements or states of matter in another, you can tell what Mercury is a liquid at room temperature, you bastard. Yes, yes, I know. There's a thing called red herrings that can just be ignored. I still got it. Sorry for interrupting you. <laughs> You're not wrong. Uh, based off of everything you have, based off of what you are doing, Looking at the riddle itself, you can tell light showing in the darkness will reveal the truth, the darkness hidden in the light, a uh, gray shape in, is drawn, the gray will be, meet in the middle. Liquid and gas are two states of matter. Water has various states that it can be formed and shaped in. One would be hot and one would be cold. So if we essence, shine the thing the in the light. middle. So you're saying that the light should come from the middle? Water liquid? That the sh oh. light should shine from the liquid and gas mirror area to the water pillar. Wait, mirrors? Ah, so right there. And Are you the should just need the one light. One very bright light, right? Yeah. All right. Like some Finn's going to go over to the... To draw the truth out from it. It could be okay. sun, because there's, there's sun there. But if that's all it took, why wouldn't something activate beforehand? I was unaware that mirrors were involved. Okay, can you make shiny mirrors? Can you come up with something shiny? No, the mirrors are already here. We just have to direct the okay. light properly. All right. In that case, I will stand at the appropriate window to shine the light down onto the water pillar. And I will hold my right hand out. And as I do, my Creed del Quor flies into my hand. This is the first time that uh, Finder, Cassidy, or Ray have ever actually seen me build the Creed Decor. 
as it burns a bright light, I expand it all the way that? out. Yes, is, I that your, is that your sword? <laughs> yep. As I, that's actually a pretty good sound effect. <laughs> Thank you. As I hold it up and uh, activate it, I activate it at maximum power. So it is shining bright, true sunlight in a 30-foot radius and an additional 30 feet of dim sunlight. Now, normally this wouldn't work, except for the weapon Finn has specifically does radiant damage. It's sunlight, baby. Now, and yeah, it does say in the description that it uh, produces true sunlight. So that 30 foot radius would burn vampires and stuff. Yeah, 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 yeah. Yeah, yeah. The point <laughs> needed yep. is the radiant damage part. Radiant, okay. specifically. Uh, right. So you like found a loophole through my puzzle. Anyways. <laughs> <laughs> As you said it didn't have to be sunlight. Now it has to be radiant. I don't know. No, I said it doesn't have to be sunlight. Something else needed to be happen. All right. So radiance. All right. <laughs> Best team. Radiant specific. Uh, <laughs> which is unfortunate for me, because uh, there was also an other way of solving this puzzle, but it involves it being more tricky. As Finn does this, Raven like answers through the hallway when Jemmy following soon after and like a casted beam shines through both pillars of liquid and gas meeting in the middle towards the pillar of water as that happens uh, Finder you're quickly like messing with the mirrors in the room uh, are you like trying to hit the light onto the what's it called the writing on the Disc, tap, tablet. I will do what my intelligence tells me to do. You, once the pillar hits, you use the radiant light around it to cast it towards the uh, tablet. I'm gonna say you succeed because you've already done the legwork. Why would it make you fail now? <laughs> You're like, no, you shine it in your own eyes, dummy. <laughs> uh, as that happens, you do begin to see the scribing on the tablet begin to light up and glow. Uh, Cassie does state, well, that's new. I've never seen that beforehand. Uh, and in the distance, you do hear like a whirling sound. Uh, think helicopter, but like very much in the distance. Uh, mm. As that happens, you do hear like not an explosion. Well, oh like boy. a destruction sound. Not massive, but for sure loud enough that you could hear it from a distance. Uh, <laughs> those closer to the door, Wynn and Jemmy, look behind themselves and you see like a sphere currently flying in the air. Uh, Raven does state, oh. that is oh so new. So, Finn, um, real quickly, the highlighted portions of the disc, what does they say? Uh, can I read them from here, or do I have to get closer? As you read them from there, uh, <laughs> the things that lit I, up... I, I can get closer if I need to. I'll just use telekinesis to hold my sword in place. You can see it from there. You can see it from there. Right. <laughs> okay. As you see them from there, uh, the light, the glowing words do read and once the light has been cast those asleep will awaken I read that, that out loud for everybody <laughs> as you read that out loud uh, <laughs> Cassie does state well no one can technically pin that on us so one problem solving puzzle at a time and with that, and a new problem to be had, we will see what happens next time. Oh. We will see what happens next time <laughs> as we end the session for today. I fell.